Hello and welcome back to antique.com. I did promise in an earlier video I had another machine that I was going to use to install NT4. So I thought it only fit that this AST Bravo 6150 should have NT4 on it. This is a Pentium Pro 150 machine. This is exactly how I found it. It has this uh, cover, best way to describe it, that's just loosely fitted in now, and it appears to have a floppy drive missing. The rest of the machine is intact. With the case lid off, we can see that there are no hard drives, and it looks like the hard drive carrier is missing as well. It's not the end of the world, but I think I've got some hard drives that I can use in this. There's a CD-ROM, a power supply, a network card and a graphics card. Memory and what you can't quite see buried quite deeply under the power supply is the processor itself. I will pull all this apart as I normally do with these machines because it is particularly dirty and dusty and there's some rust marks which I want to try and get off and I want to try and understand the machine a little bit better before I just uh, plump an operating system on it. So around the back we see some uh, information that telling us the model. This is a Bravo MS-T6150. It's an Intel Pentium Pro 150, 16 meg of RAM, 1.6 gig hard drive. Uh, I'll have to find something appropriate. I think I've got three gig somewhere. Although fairly similar to the other AST machine, it appears that AST are quite nice in putting stickers in to uh, show you where the various jumpers are on the machine. So on this we can see that we have four memory banks, another standard pen light battery which is thankful, I hate those soldered on jobs. We have four PCI M3 ISA slots. We've got our um, IDE and floppy drive and some dip switches for a change so that we can set up various things I'm assuming like the amount of memory and or the processor speed itself and then we have on the far side here the little pin chart to show you things like the hard drive LED the reset switch the power switch so that will be really useful a little bit later when um, I've, I've stripped this to pieces and uh, start putting this back together and obviously need to uh, reassure myself exactly how it goes back together. Okay, so I've withdrawn the power supply down here out of the way. Um, it appears that it's ATX. Um, you can see a much larger heatsink than you would expect on an early Pentium and that's because this is a Pentium Pro. Um, which has a, a much bigger socket and footprint than you normally would see uh, for an early Pentium. Okay, so I've popped the graphics card out. As you can see, it's just a standard PCI card. This is an ATI Mac 64. I think that's two meg of memory. It might be four meg, I don't know. Um, I noticed the uh, case label when we looked at that earlier didn't mention what graphics it had. So I, I suspect this had been um, supplied later and was, was potentially an upgrade because I don't think these ATI uh, Mac 64 cards were that cheap. And notice this also has the two uh, risers here that enable you to plug uh, a memory upgrade card. It would be interesting if I could find one of those. Um, although uh, I'm not in the habit of going out and spending loads of money just to update things just for the hell of it. Um, I seem to spend money buying a computer instead but not to upgrade it, but well, there we go. Okay, so all the IDE and floppy drive connectors are off. Uh, the uh, power supply has been disconnected and we're basically just down to removing the network card now. That's a nice uh, 3Com network card. Again, very easy to find drivers for. Okay, so I've cleaned up the motherboard. So yeah, th this is supposed to be sort of like a creamy color, but it, it, it's, it's got some ingrained dirt. It's not gonna affect the way it operates or anything, so I'll leave that as it is. Everything else is cleaned up lovely. 
heat sink. Uh, I've got rid of all there, paste off it. Same with the uh, processor, so we can see it's our nice Pentium Pro 150, 256K uh, of cache. So uh, one of the lowest spec Pentium Pro processors. It's not the 200 with the half meg or the one meg of cache, but um, absolutely perfect. So uh, I'll start reassembling this now. I've had a look at all of the various capacitors. Nothing seems swollen or leaked, so good on that. And the only other thing I need to do is change the uh, battery on the motherboard uh, and then I should be ready to reassemble. Okay, so the processor and heat sink are back in and the four bits of memory that came with the machine are in. I think this is 64 meg, I haven't checked up. I'm gonna wait until the boot, but 64 meg and a Pentium Pro 150 should be absolutely fine. Change the BIOS battery, all the jumpers are set as they need to be. So the only thing I need to do is put this in the case. Okay, the motherboard's back in now with the network card and the graphics card. I'll connect these jumper blocks up in a little bit and then I'll put the power supply back in. And the first thing I'll do is I'll just see if it boots just as it is with no hard drives, floppy drives, CD-ROMs, etc. Okay, so the power supply is in, power supply connected. I've put in the uh, keyboard, connected the monitor. So I just need to plug the power supply in, see if it goes bang, and then we'll uh, see if I can power it up. Okay, so this is the power supply. Um, I've just taken this grill off. Uh, one of the things I noticed when I was attempting to clean it is the fact that the fan is really stiff and solid. So I suspect this has had some overheating as well because this stick is all uh, greased and uh, crinkled up like it's had some heat damage on it. So I think at some point in the past this power supply has been running hot and this fan has been running hot and it's dried all the bearings out and eventually that's just caused this to fail. Okay so there's this ATX power supply I'm just going to try sat down here and see what we get. So we're getting an error code straight away one long two short so I'll need to look that up. Okay so I had a look at the AST BIOS codes should have remembered graphics card so all I've done is I've pulled it out, clean the contacts, push it back in, and we have a booting system. And even better still, 128 meg of RAM, which means these are 32 gig each. It's absolutely fantastic. Okay, so we're getting a bit more there. So the outer main case for the two sides is on. CD-ROM is in, power supply is in. Um, I've wired up everything else, including a hard drive and a floppy drive. I would have mounted them appropriately, but um, I've realized one of the things I haven't got with this is the relevant cage to hold a hard drive and a floppy drive. So I'm not really sure how I'm gonna get around that just yet, and maybe I can find something that will do the job. Um, but in the meantime, um, as I said uh, earlier, all I wanted to do was check that the various devices are being found and if that's the case maybe I'll put a CD-ROM in and just see how far we get. It's found a hard drive and it's found the CD-ROM. Yep, so we've got the date and time all set up hard drive, CD-ROM, etc. That's all in place. It's finding the processor correctly. So let's just save those changes. On the subject of hard drives, um, it's the age old issue where I don't have any small hard drives. Recently, I've come across a few more hard drives that are less than 10 gig. I'll be collecting them in a few weeks time. At that point, I will continue with this build. 